Greetings my movie geeks. Great movies are able to make you fall in love with a character. You want them to win. You want them to lose. You want them to fall for each other. But what happens when the character you love or loathe comes to a grisly end? Here are six of the best movie death scenes. Please remember to like, share, subscribe and ring that bell to be notified every Wednesday and Friday. Do it now. I may have mentioned recently that this isn't one of my favourite films. It isn't even a film that I like that much, but I've seen it. Well, I've seen a lot of the versions of it. King Kong is all about a large ape that is cruelly taken away from its home to be paraded in front of New York theatre goers. But he escapes and runs amok all over New York, culminating in a climb up at the Empire State Building. Airplanes shoot at him at the top of the building until he succumbs and falls to his death. Carl Denham, who was the one who captured King Kong, states, Oh no, it wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty that killed the beast. It was you, you asshole. You're the one who took it from its home. Despite me not liking the film too much, the Peter Jackson version, I blubbered like a baby when I saw that monkey fall. Not the god-awful Nicolas Cage film. Edward Woodward stars as Police Sergeant Neil Howie, who travels to a remote Hebridean island of Summer Isle to find a missing girl called Rowan Morrison. While there, Howie, a devout Christian, is disturbed to find the islanders paying homage to a pagan Celtic gods of their ancestors. They copulate in the fields, include children as part of their May Day celebrations, teach children of the phallic association, of the maypole and place toads in their mouths to cure sore throats. We all do that. He comes to the conclusion that Rowan is alive and has been chosen for sacrifice. But it turns out it is he who has been led on a merry chase. Lord Summer Isle, played by Christopher Lee, tells him that he is the sacrifice because he is willing kin like virgin fool. As he came of his own free will, has the power of a king, as he's a policeman, is a virgin, and is also a fool. But the moment we realise what is going to happen, that it, the title shows us exactly how he will die, is one of the most powerful moments in cinema. Oh my God! Oh Jesus Christ! As he's forced into the body of the Wicker Man. And well, it's brilliant. Here it is. Oh God! Jesus Christ! Oh God. Psycho. Spoilers for the film that is over 60 years old. I believe you should see this film before you know what it's about. But it is one of those films that is well ingrained into the pop culture zeitgeist. Parodied everywhere from The Simpsons to even I've parodied it. So if you haven't seen it, skip to the next film. Janet Lee plays Marion Crane the main character of Psycho, and she's just robbed her work and gone on a run. She exchanges cars using some of the cash that she has stolen, and it's a great beginning to a film that goes in a completely different direction. She stops at a small motel on one of the old roads where the main highway has moved from. She checks into the Bates Motel and is even given a sandwich by the polite, unassuming motel owner, Norman Bates, played by Anthony Perkins. He gives her room one and she settles in for the night. Feeling guilty, she decides to return home and return the money in the morning. She showers, but then is killed by a woman who has just burst into her room. The scene is flawless. Quick flashes of the knife and silhouetted killer. The defensive movements of Marion Crane 
and the dark blood mixing with the shower water circling the drain. That then transitions from the drain to Marion's motionless eye. It's a brilliant death that would have shocked the initial audience. Having the main character, a well-known actress like Lee, killed off was something that hadn't been done before. It is fantastic and has been copied and parodied several times over. Psycho and is one of the films I remember watching as a kid and realising how amazing films could be. Blade Runner. Roy Batty is a Teutonic replicant, a humanoid vision of physical perfection, built to do dangerous work in the off-world colonies and serve in the off-world armies before being retired when they have served their purpose. He escapes and comes to Earth to hide out. Rick Deckard is a Blade Runner who is tasked to hunt down the replicants and retire them. At the heart of Blade Runner is about what it's like to be human. And the final soliloquy of Batty is a perfect interpretation of that. Rutger Hauer supposedly improvised a speech without Scott's knowledge the night before filming the scene. And it's utterly beautiful. So, here it is. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. <laughs> Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the ten hours of gate. All those moments will be lost in time. Like <clears throat> tears. My first video of the year was Raiders of the Lost Ark, and I think you know which death scene I'm going to talk about. Indy and Marion are captured, and the Nazis under the lead of Belloc are about to open the Ark of the Covenant. Indy whispers to Marion not to look, to shut her eyes. The Nazis open the Ark to find sand. There's nothing there. But then a humming occurs, smoke begins to rise from the golden box. Lightning, fire, the wrath of God, it all emerges, and the Nazis are killed but they are killed in the most gruesome way possible. Most are electrocuted, faces melt, and Belloc even explodes, all before being swept up into the Ark. What's remarkable about this film is it's a PG, and it wouldn't be until Temple of Doom came along that the PG-13 rating was invented. Finally, and this is probably my best death scene on this list, The Fellowship of the Ring it was an immense film, a film that I loved when I saw it and still watch to this day. It is, in my opinion, the best of the trilogy. Yeah, I know, finally. Uh, we are introduced to the main heroes of the story as they begin their quest to travel to Mordor to destroy the One Ring. Frodo, Sam, Merry, Pippin, Gandalf, Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, and of course, Boromir. <laughs> Boromir, played by Sean Bean, is the son of Gondor's steward and pledges himself to the Fellowship to help destroy the Ring. As a man, he is weak and he succumbs to the power of the ring. He tries to take the ring from Frodo, but fails. But then, when the uruk attack, he fights hard to save Merry and Pippin. Despite carrying his shield up and down mountains, he doesn't have it when it's needed. He kills a lot of uruk but he is pierced by not one, not two, but three arrows. Merry and Pippin are taken, and Boromir falls. It is one of the best shot death scenes in movie history. The music, the pacing, the bastard Lurtz getting pissed off because it takes him three arrows to kill Boromir 
it all works to perfection. I'd also argue that there is no other death scenes in the entire trilogy that match Boromir's death. It's just very, very emotive. Watch it. <laughs> These are just six of the best death scenes, in my opinion. Are there any more? You tell me. Let me know in the comments of any other death scenes that you think I should mention, or ask me if I've seen them, because I might not have done, and then I'll watch them and I'll compare. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified every time we release a video. I'm Nate Eels from Movie Geek, and I will see you at the cinema. <laughs> I'm just trying it out. I'll see you at the cinema. <laughs> I'll see you at the cinema. Maybe.